Hi. Happy lunchtime to anyone who's on Australian Eastern Standard Time. There's lots of cars going past. All of a sudden, all the cars are back out on the road again. Uh, there's been quite a big lift in restrictions here. Um, we'll see how long that lasts. Hopefully, it'll be like that and we can slowly go back to normal. Or a new kind of normal. Which brings me to the topic which I posted about earlier. Uh, which is kind of a response or my thoughts that have been spurred on by the Thesis Whisperers blog from about a week ago. And um, in it, it's a huge discussion on the PhD or postgraduate work and how it needs to change because academia is changing, the world is changing and our postgraduate research and outputs have not been quite as quick to go along with that. This is something I've been talking about with colleagues for a long time, just about whether uh, or how you can do alternative modes of dissemination of research, um, what are the different ways to produce theses and postgraduate outcomes so that it's more um, more practical and leaves you more career ready and how to support postgraduates so that they are armed with a whole range of skills that they can easily articulate when they're looking for a job post postgraduate degree. So um, and I've been talking to a few awesomely talented women the last few days, um, very clever ladies who are just wondering what to do with their careers and I was thinking I still think there's value in doing a PhD. I do. Um, Bula Tarisi, I would really like your thoughts on this too actually. Um, so especially whether you think the PhD is worth the time, effort, uh, lack of funds <laughs> in your account. Um, I think if you're at a particular point in your life where you can get by um, and do something that requires so much concentration and you have the support from your family in one form or another or the space from your family in one form or another, then it's it's not so bad. Probably going into the, the cost of postgraduate study for family and the impact of academic careers on family is a whole other topic that we can delve into at a later date. I have a lot to say about that also. Um, for me, when I started my undergraduate degree, I don't think I ever knew what a PhD was. And I was saying to someone the other day, I just wanted to go as far as I could. And I always am kind of following my nose a little bit and just going on whatever opportunities are coming up. And I had the opportunity to do honours. And then I did not get such a great mark for my honours thesis. So, but I still managed to get an offer to go and do my master's on a Commonwealth supported position at Melbourne Uni. So I took that opportunity and was really excited because I had originally wanted to go to Melbourne when I was at high school. Um, don't regret being at La Trobe for my undergraduate at all because I think actually that suited me down to the ground and I got a lot out of that. I adored, adored my time there. Um, Melbourne Uni had a bunch of other things going for it which were really interesting but it, the pool of postgraduates was huge. There were huge numbers of people doing Masters and PhD in the History Department and so you just kind of blended into the woodwork a little bit or oh, that's how I felt um, just one in a big big pool and um, and then for my PhD I went to Deakin so I worked really really hard on my master's thesis so I could get a scholarship for my PhD and uh, so that was that was good and I think if I hadn't had the scholarship I would have had to stop studying uh, in fact I know I would have had to stop studying so um, I was really grateful for that, but I always juggled work and study and sometimes multiple jobs while doing the study. 
so um that wasn't always great and uh, definitely wasn't always easy but it meant that I was building a different skill set at the same time as doing my research and and my writing and all that sort of thing so while I really loved getting academic work and was a bit frustrated when I wasn't doing academic work I I knew I was always getting something out of that sort of thing so um, I guess in that would be the idea that it's good to diversify your skill set always a little bit at least and not put all your eggs in the one basket thinking that um, academia will offer you everything everything that it, it promises um, will provide it I mean and and definitely don't expect security oh my goodness and I that was hard to hear when I was a postgraduate student and very determined. I think I said that in a Facebook Live the other day, bloody determined to the point of it being ridiculous. Um, yes, I've been called a bulldozer lately too. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's part of why I stuck it out also. But I just really loved what I was doing, loved the writing and the research. So if, if depends on what your motivations are, if you just love it and it's going to get you up in the morning and you're going to be lying awake at night thinking about your ideas and desperate to write them down and itching to get into your research and that sort of thing, if, that, if you can sustain that for five or more years or three or more years or whatever it is that you think it's going to take you, then go for it and there's no reason why you can't complete it while you're doing other work. I think when I was working outside of academia and juggling postgrad, uh, I felt like I wasn't taken as seriously and I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, yeah, but increasingly build your reputation and your profile and that sort of thing within the industry and the sector and that makes it a little bit easier there's a and I think this is one of the things that needs to change is that whole um any attitudes that people carry about people who are juggling lots of different things and not putting their whole whole being into academia that has to shift um there has to be a shift around acknowledging people's different routes into academia as well um because i still think that there is a little bit of an attitude that's negative towards people who come in from industry or elsewhere and then come into the system um, and an expectation that people will just naturally know what to do as well. So people need support through it all. And I think that's where um, postgrad programs can change a bit too, is to provide more support um, that caters to that, um, to people coming in from different industries and then needing to switch their thinking from industry to academic thinking and writing and we can probably also be a little bit more open to other ways of writing that's not quite so polished um, definitely inclusion of indigenous languages that's another topic again um, which I think we still have a long way to go on and I, oh, I just keep thinking about John Wyko's PhD which he wrote in Ben and Derry at ANU which is pretty amazing and then I think he had an English version as well um, but you know there's still there's a lot we can do to be more inclusive of Indigenous language in postgrad. I am definitely ranting today but I just wanted to bring this up because I know people are thinking about it you know do I don't I start on the postgrad journey and I think that there is a lot that you can do and if you find the right supervisor and that should be your starting point is to find the supervisor that's going to be a good fit for you that you can see yourself working with for several years who will listen to you and help you be 
adaptable through the changing landscape of academia and whatever other industry you're interested in working in, um, then that's that's the biggest part of your battle one. The, the rest you can almost find for yourself. Like it doesn't matter really what institution you're at to do a postgraduate degree. If you have a good supervisor, you can cherry pick from different universities um, and different programs and and do your own kind of professional development program uh, as well as the one that's provided by the university. So you can choose which way you want to go and which skills you want to develop and nurture for yourself. Um, and if your supervisor is supportive, then all the better. Um, but it's a beautiful thing when you've got a supervisor who's supportive of what you want to do. I'll just see what Tarisi says. Yes, I love writing and researching. And now I'm looking at new ways of disseminating my research data to my communities, the museum and Fiji in various ways, such as exhibitions, social media, podcasts and writing in my Indigenous vernacular. I know I'm so excited about all the stuff you're doing and it's just building on what you've been doing for such a long time. Um, especially the social, uh, like the language stuff, translating that into social media posts and some of the infographics that you've done and all that sort of thing has been so cool to watch. And I think that's been um, fun for me to test out too because um, I've been playing around with the social media planning platforms like Later is the one I'm using at the moment. There's also Social Sprout and what are the other ones? another one hang on see if I can find it it's like oh Hootsuite Hootsuite is another one um so I test through there like what's the best time to post so that you get the biggest reaction from an audience um there's a thing called hashtag expert or something that you can use to make sure that you've got the most effective hashtags on your posts um it's interesting comparing how of like what audience you'll grab through Instagram as compared to Facebook um, and Twitter again is another one um, get hardly any hits on my YouTube but that's okay because um, you can cross post across the um, Instagram TV and Facebook lives and whatnot so if you miss someone on one platform you'll catch them on another and and that sort of thing and then also when I've just put a tiny little bit of money into advertising through Facebook or Instagram, you can program it so that it's targeted and you, your audience gets targeted so you're reaching people in that specific area that you're interested in. So, Tarisi, you've probably already done this, but um, it would be worth even just putting like $2 on a post that you know is going to do well. Um, setting it so that it will reach Fiji in particular and then seeing if it'll shoot up um, shoot up your numbers and your followers and build your audience too. So those are some of the things that I found really interesting but um, part of why I'm doing all this stuff on social media is because I was reflecting last year about why I got into history in the first place and I really did want to write for a broad audience. I did not want to just write for academics. And so I'm trying to return to that and and kind of beat the academic writing out of myself. <laughs> I don't want to go back to my, um, to that whole, like gum nuts in the bushfire revolution sprung up across South America. I don't want to go back to that. Um, but you know, just writing in a way that's more accessible and isn't behind a stupidly high paywall, that would be great. Um, yeah, and there's heaps of ways to get discussions going about history and other, other research topics that we've all looked at uh, through social media. And so that's all really exciting, I think. Um, but, yeah, it's... Um, and, of course, I won't hear what people say about it necessarily but that's that's my motivation is to just go back to what I wanted to do in the first place with this whole thing share share my interest in history and how I love to learn about it and then better understand why things are the way they are now and look for inspiration from people who have come before us as well so um yes 
that's that's that. So I don't know. I don't know whether um, people are feeling the same way. If you're feeling like journal articles are a bit of a waste of time, um, or books are less important than they used to be. Um, it really depends on which way you want your career to go. I wrote my thesis as if it was going to be a book so that I could quickly publish it afterwards with the thought that one, that would mean it's more accessible and two, it might help me get a job more easily. So um, not all theses are designed for that um, and you're writing more to examiners a lot of the time but that was how I decided to go. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited, Tyrese, about what you're doing. So excited, and um, I love the lives that you do around the island. It's so great. Um, it's great to hear Rosa Vakaviti from over here because <laughs> I miss it. And um, yeah, and so your your pages are giving me that. Um, yeah, I just need to practice more. Mm. All right, I better log off. I've got to tune into another Zoom meeting and um, and learn some new tricks for, what am I doing it for? Oh, some of the stuff that you and I are working on actually, Teresi, I'm, I'm doing some training. So I'll be able to feed back some more ideas to you soon. Um, we can get our entrepreneurial hats on and and um, and, and forge ahead. But uh, I hope everyone has a nice rest of the day or night or morning, whichever time it is there, and uh, I'll catch you all soon.